you doing, Cindy? Making sauerkraut. Huh? Making sauerkraut. Well, Making how do you sauerkraut. do it? Well, first you get yourself um, cabbage. Um, this is a late Dutch, they call it. Supposedly it's the best for it. And you clean it up. It has a core. This is the core. So you cut the core out. And then after you cut the core out, you take out some of the outer leaves that are bad, wash them, clean it up a bit. And then um, what I do is I weigh it out, and I got my scale here. And uh, for five pounds of cabbage, it's about two ounces of, I use pickling salt. You want to use I guess you can use kosher salt too. You don't want to use regular salt because I think it might be too fine. And you don't want to use iodine salt. So after I get it all cut up, I'll mix the salt in. This is what I've cut so far. And then I mix the salt into it. And then I use, um, they say use a tomato, potato How, how much salt? About two ounces. Oh. For five pounds. It's going to be a little over five pounds because I'm right at five pounds now. Or four, four pounds. So I'll have to figure it out. Probably three, ta three and a half tablespoons. So I'll probably do four tablespoons. Um, and then I mix the salt in. I'll take this all out and then uh, mix it in real good. Or take part of it out. Put salt in and put salt and layer it again. And then you just squish it down with a potato masher. And I use this one. This is my potato masher. And then after I get it all squished out as best I can, you'll start seeing, it's really funny, you don't add any water to this, but um, these have a lot of natural water in them. And you'll start seeing the water come up because of the salt in it. And it makes its own brine. And then I let it sit for 10 days to two weeks. And then you can it. Just to say. So now it's been about 10 days. It was all the way to here on this line right here. And I kept squishing it and squishing it and I got some juice down here. That's the brine, which I will have to make some more when I go to water bath it here. I'm gonna do that here in just a little bit. So um, every day or every other day, I went in and squished it down and then I took off the slime. And that's this stuff. It gets kind of slimy. Um, the very first time I made this, it kind of freaked me out because it was slimy. And I have a friend's mom who does it. She came over and said, no, that's, that's normal. And my crock pot got, my crock got this stuff on, which is normal. It's like a salt. She said, don't worry about it. It washes off, and it does. And that leached through the ceramic? And that le leached through my, oh, wow. my, my pot here. Um, I bought this at a garage sale for like about five bucks maybe. This part is broke, which is okay because I put um, a cotton cloth on here. It's just a dish towel I washed out really, really good and got it really hot and stuff. And I put that over. But before I do that, I put this down inside to hold. It's just another um, clay, another pot, something, something like this, a, a serving dish. I don't know what it is. To hold the sour the um, cabbage down. So the the cloth just keeps the flies and it just stuff keeps out. The flies and keeps out it a little bit cleaner. Cleaner, it helps it breathe. And then I just put the top back on. Like and I have this in here like that. I have this over that like this. And then what I did, and then what I do is I do have the top for it, and I just put that on top. Um, you can use cheesecloth too, which I have, but I thought, well, this is right here. I just use Keep that. Keeps the flies out. Keeps the flies and the bugs out. Why any fly would go in this stuff, I have no idea, because it does make your house kind of smell. Kept thinking, what is that smell? And I finally realized what that smell was. It's this. It's the fermenting smell, and it does have kind of a funky smell. It smells kind of almost rotten, so if you do make it at home, and you think something died in your house? It's not. It's just your cabbage. It's just your right? sauerkraut. It's it is. Sauerkraut. It is rotten cabbage. Is yeah. what it is with a little bit of salt in it. Just salt. It, it, when you really think about it, it's kind of disgusting, but it tastes good. Yeah. So 
I went to the market today and I bought half pint and pint jars. So I'm going to put some in the half pint and some in the pint. It won't be a lot, but between the other batch and this batch, we should have enough for the winter. And what I'll do with the other jars left, my grapes are very, very ripe. and So, so, so what do you do to can it? So what I'll do is I'll wash these jars really good, and then I'll grab this. They call it water bathing it. I'll put water in here, get it to boil. Make sure that it's an inch above the top of your of your canning jar and boil it for 15 minutes. The water's actually got to be boiling for 15 minutes and then after 50 minutes I'll take it out and put it on my my big wooden um, cutting board here and let them cool and you can hear them pop. One of them last time didn't pop so we use that one right away and um, it's really great if you, I love um, bratwurst. Being raised in Wisconsin of course bratwurst are my fa one of my favorites so what I did is we cooked some brats up and we had buns and we put the sauerkraut on top of them and they're really good that way. Another way my grandmother and my mother used to make it is they would do short ribs, beef short ribs, and they would put the beef, they would cook the short ribs and the sauerkraut together and then make an egg dumpling and that's kind of a, an old style German or Norwegian meal. Mostly German. How about that cake you made with the sauerkraut? I made a chocolate cake with sauerkraut. I know it sounds gross and a lot of people go, oh yuck, but you can't taste the sauerkraut. It just makes, you know, you, you know it's in there when you eat it, but it makes the cake so moist. Look up um, chocolate cake made with sauerkraut. You'll be really surprised how really good it is and stuff. So not to get off that subject, but one year I made Gary a green tomato pie. Didn't tell him what it was and you could swear it's an apple pie, but they are really good. Yeah, it was really good. In fact, I made two other ones, and he took one up to um, a couple up to hunting camp, and he was guiding hunters, and the hunters really like the green tomato pie because it it tastes just like an apple pie. Um, so yeah, so. And then there was a pecan pie that was made out of crackers. What was the other one? It was pecan pie, but it wasn't pecans. It was uh, um, what they put in it. Beans, I believe. Some kind of beans. Pinto, Pinto beans, Pinto I think beans. it was. Yeah. And that came from the southern states when, um, after the Civil War, they didn't have any um, pecans. So to do it cheaply, they use, I believe they used Pinto beans for that. You can look the recipe up. And there was one made with oatmeal that's actually really Oatmeal, good. that's the one. Yeah, that's actually really good. But... Um, yeah, it was surprising. I... I I had never heard of that. I didn't think it sounded good at all, and it was. It was with the oatmeal one that we had. Yes. That was really good. Yeah, I've had them with pinto beans. Um, try, you know, if you like to experiment and if you like to cook, try looking up the sauerkraut chocolate cake. It is amazingly good. It's super moist. I think what it is is that the sauerkraut just makes it really, really moist. It doesn't taste like sauerkraut, though. It tastes like chocolate cake. And it was really good. And it was really good, so... Yeah, so, so basically all sauerkraut is is a little bit of salt and cabbage and you leave it here to rot. <laughs> it sounds horrible. And you want to make sure um, you really squish it down. You can use, I use this because this works the best, or a tomato masher. So now when I go to can it, I'm going to have to make some more um, salty brine and it's just salt and water because I'm not going to have enough to put in the jars as I can it because that's last time when I did it, when I canned it, I realized that I do need to make some more salty brine and that's real easy. It's just salt and hot water and you just, um, you just make it and you just, as you, as you fill your jars, if there's not enough of this, you just use the salty brine just to help with the moisture. And that's what um, Martha Moody She's the one that gave me this recipe and they made it. My mom and dad made it for a long time, but I just didn't remember. And that's what she said. Sometimes you have to make some extra salty brine to go with it. So you have enough that when you when you put it in the jars, and when I get to that part, I'll show you what, what I mean. The salt's supposed to kill any bacteria that could be harmful, and it still ferments. But uh, 15 minutes in boiling water in a canning jar, that ought to kill anything that would kill you. So... 
that's it's safe. It just seems wrong to eat something that's basically rotten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when I get to that point where I put it in the jars, I'll show you what I mean. See you in a couple minutes. So um, here it is in a pint jar. I've got enough brine right there for now for this one. I'm just starting. I pack it in fairly tight. Um, what I do is, I, even though they're new from the store, I still wash them in hot soapy water and rinse them off. I don't do that with these. I get through the jars and the caps. So then you just stick this on here. Tighten it down. There's one. <laughs> it doesn't look that great. Tastes good though. Oh. Okay, so now I've water bathed the first batch for 15 minutes in boiling water. You have to make sure the water is boiling. And then you set your timer for 15 minutes. And actually, all I did was look at the clock, <laughs> figured out what 15 minutes. Careful. Parrot in the background says it's good. <laughs> yeah. Three. Good. Four. So there's five pints right there, and now I've got these four left to do. Same thing, put it in there, let it come to a boil, boil for 15 minutes, and then take it out and just set it out on a surface until it cools, and as it cools, it should seal. So um, we'll wait and see. I actually have Somewhere in the house here, I actually have little grabbers that come down like this for doing this, but I can't find them anywhere. But I know they're in here somewhere. I think I know where they're at. Where? In the cupboard up there above the washer. Probably. And that's all there is to it? Pretty much. So... Um, basically a quick rundown. You have to make sure your water covers the top of these. See like this is. And now I'll put the top, this top back on and bring it to a boil. And you have to make sure it's really boiling, a rapid boil basically. And that's where you come up with the term you're water bathing it. Hmm. So, so a quick rundown. I got the cabbage from the fan. I cut it up myself. You can actually find cabbage um, cabbage cutters. So I just use a sharp knife and cut it up. I put it in there and layered it with salt. You have to use pickling salt or sea salt or any salt that's not iodized. But pickling salt is actually the best to use. And then I layered it and as I layered it I squished it down with my little squishing device. 
and then in seven to ten days, it can, some can be a little longer, some can be a little shorter, um, every day I would take the cloth off and the top off and um, squish it down more with my little squishy thing. Um, you can use a wooden maul like I have, you can use a potato uh, masher, an old, you know, the old fashioned type. Uh, and then you take a little bit of the scum, scum off, and that's normal for it to have the scum on. And this was done in about 10 days. Um, if you like it more celery, you can wait a few more days. Either if you like it less, you can do it a little less. It's, it's up to personal preference. I think 10 days work great with that. A little side note here, Martha gave me this recipe. She's a great person. I work for her daughter. She told me one time they used to put fennel seeds in with it just for flavoring and stuff, but people quit wanting it because they thought it was bugs. I actually thought that was hilarious when she <laughs> yeah. told me that. But, and that's basically all sauerkraut is. It's just, you know, you can, you can play with it one way or another. This is a little bit more crunchier. I don't like it when it's really soft because you're going to reheat it anyway. So it's done. It has fermented and it's done. But I like mine a little bit more crunchier. And watching this, you know, it probably won't do it, but it's still boiling in the jars. I see air bubbles coming up every now and then. And that's what you want to see. So any bacteria or any nasty stuff in there, it's going to be done. Oh, here was one. I missed it. So my next adventure I'm going to do is my, my grapevines have produced a lot of grapes this year. So what I'm going to do is I already have picked some. I'm going to go pick out, pick some more tomorrow, wash them and clean them. And then I'm going to put them in my pressure cooker. And um, I got one of those instant pots and make grape juice with them. And um, I will can them the same way. I'll run them through a water bath just to seal them. I have made wine with those and they make okay wine. They're basically a Concord grape. But they're really small, but boy are they good, but they unfortunately they have a grape seed in them. Um, some people say that the grape seeds won't hurt you, they're actually good for you. I like to eat them off the vine, they're really good. I've had made, like I said, wine with them. Um, I'm not really much of a jelly eater, I have made jelly, I, I can probably make a batch of grape jelly with them and stuff, because I do have the stuff to do that. So we're going to see how well making grape juice from them works. Um, maybe on down the line because I won't put any sugar or anything in them they'll be sugar free maybe on down the line what we'll do is we'll make wine out of them instead because it did make really good wine in fact it was made really, really good. good fermented grape juice yeah fermented grape juice and actually a friend of mine who was supposed to quit drinking for a while told me that she wished there was unfermented um, grapes so and um, instead of wine and I looked at her and I said well it's called grape juice so <laughs> We're going to see, you know, I, I really had a good crop of grapes this year and they're really good. I love to eat them just as is. So what I'll do is I'll go pick them and get them off. Some of them I already got froze. Um, I like the instant pot because I can make, it doesn't take very long to make the juice. It's actually pretty quick. And we'll go from there and see what happens. Some of them I'll probably freeze for later on to eat because they come right off. The little clusters come right off. And I can just throw them in smoothies. Maybe mix them with some elderberries. Yeah, we'll see. So that's my adventure so far for the last few days. I'll have to see what happens. Stay tuned. Subscribe to Muskrat Outdoors. As you notice, I'm not wearing an apron either for a change. I took it off. I was going to put a different on, different one on to see if anybody would notice, but then I forgot. So, but that's what happens when you start drinking gin and tonic because it is cocktail hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It is very much cocktail hour. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Have a great day.